Mathematics is a field rich with mnemonics, quick punchy ways to remember concepts and techniques like PEMDAS and BODMAS and TONKAS and WLOG, but none of them have earned my scorn quite like FOIL. This dastardly spell instructs students on a word-by-word -word basis how to expand the product of a binomial, a sum of two terms, with another binomial, another sum of two terms. And my problem with FOIL is that it's a very specific set of instructions for one instance of a far more general situation, which is when any polynomial is multiplied by some other polynomial. For example, if we had this trinomial, a sum of three terms, multiplied by this binomial, FOIL does not tell us what to do here. We would be at a loss. Of course, for the 2x2 two two case, FOIL works fine. Its instructions tell us that to expand this product, we must first multiply the first terms, then the outside terms, then the inside terms, and then finally the last terms. This gives us AC plus AD plus BC plus BD, which is indeed the correct sum of products. This is the correct expansion, but it only works in this particular case. This mnemonic is very popular in America still to this day, though you may be surprised to learn that it was first introduced in 1920. By William Betts in his book Algebra for Today. And I'm sure he would be pleased to know how accurate that title ended up being, as students still churn out FOIL expansions to this day. One of the interesting phenomena you may notice if you ever teach younger students mathematics is that they often view each mathematical technique as a sort of spell which is to be cast in any appropriate situation throughout the duration of the unit, all the way up into until the exam, after which they may receive a new set of spells for different situations. One of the symptoms of this view of mathematics education is some students, when learning FOIL, may carry out a product like this in a very unusual way. What we would call the big brain solution is to first notice that 2 plus 3 is in parentheses, and so adding those together first gives us 5. Similarly, 4 plus 5 is in parentheses, so we may add those to get 9, and then quickly arrive at the correct answer that this product is equal to 45. On the other hand, the foil-brained solution would be to insist that since this is a binomial times a binomial, we must first multiply the first terms, that's 2 times 4. Only then may we move on to multiplying the outside terms, that's 2 times 5. After this, it may be permitted, after brief prayer to the foil gods, to multiply the inside terms together. Thus, we have 3 times 4. And then, so says the pharaoh of foil, that we may at last multiply the last terms together. And so the dedicated foiler toils and finds this is 8 plus 10 plus 12 plus 15, and indeed they arrive at the correct answer of 45, and it only took a dozen or so extra steps. While the eagerness of the FOIL fan may lead to them having a strange solution to a product like this, what happens when we look at trinomials, which certainly FOIL is not built to deal with? Well, if we have a trinomial, like A plus B plus C, multiplied by another trinomial, D plus E plus F, we actually have, perhaps fittingly, three possible ways we might do this. I'm sure you've heard some people say that foiling is not a technique, it's a lifestyle. And that comes in here, where even though we have a trinomial times a trinomial, the dedicated foiler will say, no matter, we simply turn these things into binomials using the blessed associative property of addition. In so doing, we put B plus C in its own set of parentheses, thus turning this sum of three terms into a sum of two terms, and we can do a similar thing with this other parenthetical, putting E and F in their own set of parentheses. And after casting this wicked spell, the foiler laughs deviously as he intends to proceed in his usual manner. First, 
outside, inside, last. Now, my preferred strategy is to just understand the distributive property, which tells us in this situation, to multiply this by this, we must distribute all terms on the left through all terms on the right. In other words, we must multiply each term on the left by each term on the right. And so you may quickly remember this process simply as each by each. On the other hand, there are some who are not so committed to FOIL as they are simply to mnemonics. And indeed, there is a nice punchy mnemonic for the trinomial by trinomial situation. And that is FOIL mf mf mlum. This, of course, clearly expresses the same thing as the prior two ideas, telling us that we must multiply the first terms together, then the outside terms, then the inside terms, then the last terms, then the middle terms, then the first and the third terms, then the middle and the first terms, then the middle and the last terms, then the last and the middle terms, so that's another easy method. Of course, both FOIL and mnemonics are starting to get a little silly in this situation, so what if we extend it to four terms by four terms? Surely then, we'll simply be stuck using the good old-fashioned distributive property. Yet, if you think a FOILer would be dispirited by something as elementary as this, then you simply haven't had an honest conversation with one. Once again, we can use the associative property of addition to rewrite both of these sums as binomials. Take a plus b and let them snuggle up in their own set of parentheses, and we shall permit the same snuggling for both c and d. Thus, we've taken one, two, three, four terms, and for our purposes, turned it into one two terms. And of course, we can do the same thing for e plus f plus g plus h. And so again, the foiler snickers with that devious grin and casts his wicked spell. First, outside, inside, last. Of course, upon doing all of this foiling, he will discover there is much foiling left to be done, and will no doubt cheer upon that grotesque discovery. Of course, the more simple-minded among us may, without any wicked spells or incantations, simply multiply each term on the left by each term on the right. Of course, due to the amount of overlap and visual complexity, at this point actually drawing the arrows between these terms becomes rather impractical, and so really we must picture in our mind's eye the beautiful symphony of arrows linking term to term. And even the acronym folk leave not the fun only to us and the foilers, for indeed there is once again a quick and catchy acronym for the 4x4 four four situation. And it looks like this. Foil and if you can't remember that, well, you probably don't remember your mother's birthday either, and that makes me sick. But there is still another way we could do this that we haven't discussed. Suppose we have AX to the power of 5 plus BX to the power of 3 plus C multiplied by DX to the power of 4 plus EX plus F. If you're simply looking for a systematic way to organize your work when expanding the product of polynomials like this, a table works very nicely. So here I've sketched out a grid on which we can complete this multiplication. In the top left, I'll put a dot to represent the multiplication that is about to go down. Note that each of these terms consists of a coefficient, like a, b, and c, multiplied by some power of x. This term has x to the power of 5, this term has technically x to the power of 0, that is no x at all, this term has x to the power of 1, and so on. Then what we do in this first column is put the coefficients of x from this first polynomial. We start with a, which is the coefficient of the highest power of x. We have a x to the fives. Then it's important that we don't skip any powers of x. So although the next power we see is x to the three, if we just put a b here, we would be skipping x to the power of four. This method is really only going to be handy if we make sure to put all powers of x down. So we also have to represent the fact that we have zero x to the power of fours. How many x to the power of threes do we have? Well, that would be b. And then we also have no x squareds. So then we'll put a zero for zero x squareds. 
We have also no x to the power of 1s, so another 0 for that, and then the constant, the x to the power of 0 term, is just c. We do a similar thing along this first row for this polynomial, except we can start with x to the power of 4, because that's the highest power of x in this polynomial. So we put d, the coefficient of x to the power of 4, and then we'll need to put 0, representing the amount of x to the power of 3 that we have. We also have 0x squared. We have e x, and then f as the constant. Then, as you would expect, in each cell we will put the product of the corresponding coefficients from each row and column. So here we have a times d. Here we have 0 times d, here we have b times d, 0 times d, 0 times d, and c times d. These next two columns will of course consist entirely of zeros. Then this column will have a times e, then 0 times e, then b times e, then 0 times e, 0 times e, and c times e. And the last column we have a times f, 0 times f, b times f, 0 times f, 0 times f, and c times f. Now, because of how we've organized this table, the terms that that lie on the same counter diagonal will have the same degree. So for example, this term, AD, represents the x to the power of 9s, like ax to the 5 times dx to the 4. That gives us AD x to the power of 9. And again, that is a counter diagonal, although a very small one. The next counter diagonal looks like this, and the degree this represents just counts down 1. So this was x to the 9, this, 0 plus 0, tells us how much x to the 8 we have. Of course, we have none. The next counter diagonal, bd plus 0 plus 0, tells us how much x to the 7 we have. That's coming from bx cubed times dx4, so in total, bd x to the 7. We continue in this way, adding up along the counter diagonals. The next one would tell us that we have ae x to the 6. The next one would tell us that we have a f x to the 5, then c d plus b e x to the 4, then b f x to the 3, 0 x to the 2, c e x to the 1, and c f as the constant term. And with no expense spared, I'll write out that answer in this luxurious metallic bronze sharpie. So there's our answer, easy as pie, all it took was writing out this giant f***ing table. So those are just a few thoughts on methods of expanding polynomial products. I like to be real casual about it, you know, just multiply each term in the left by each term on the right. But if you prefer some other method, <clears throat> That's fine. From my fate, twisting to escape this. Climbing on a up my, my wrist if you can break it. Breaking in my past, I'm making it up fast. So slow down, give me the time so I can fake it. Grace it to the words and just how I say shit. And let me speak my poetry to your face. It's not in the mid if you ain't listening. Not infinite if you ain't really in the mid.